Okay. Hi, everyone. And I hope this comes out the way that I intend it to. We'll see what happens because um, I need to share my screen while I'm talking about this. So, um, yeah. Anyways, so I know that in one of my initial videos, I talked about how great Mendeley was and, you know, how useful a citation manager is. And while I still believe that that might be very beneficial for some people, I personally have not found that to be as efficient and useful as I had thought it would be. Um, I still use Mendeley essentially as backup storage for a lack of better explanation, um, but I use my kind of cloud accounts to essentially save uh, articles. And so I'm gonna kind of work through showing you why I don't really, why I have some issues with Mendeley. And I'm not gonna say that this is how all citation managers are, or that all citation managers are bad, or even that like Mendeley is bad because as I've mentioned from the very beginning, like if something works for you, do it. You know, I'm not really claiming to have it all figured out or that, you know, there's one ultimate thing that's better than anything else. If you find this helpful for you, great. If not, fine. I just personally have been trying to make things more efficient as much as I can where I can. And I thought that using a citation manager would do that. But in my experience, it's just created more frustration and more, uh, I don't know, of a headache than anything else. Uh, but again, I still have friends that completely live by citation manager and I've seen them use it and it seems to work for them. So if it works for you, great. If it doesn't, fine. One of the biggest reasons why I am kind of struggling with using Mendeley is how things are integrated into the software. And also if you need to get it out of the software, it's a headache. Let's get started with this situation. So like, let's say I have this article that I want to download and I click on this little Mendeley icon. If you notice, it says one reference detected on a page and it's a website. And then it recognizes this as a web page, even though it's kind of like an online version of Adobe. And it doesn't list, it lists maybe the title and then it lists none of the names, none of the publications. And so let's say that I go here and let's just click on Hedonia um, and Eudaimonia. I think it just talks in Eudaimonia. So I do like the fact that you can categorize it, but here's the problem. If I want to download this thing, I have to fill in every little, you can't even just like, so there's also, let's say the citation here. And if I highlight this and then I copy and then I paste it here, but it, there's, there's no kind of like smart import tool to kind of recognize it and having some type of thing where you could insert the insert the citation and it break it down for you would be really helpful. Or if there's an option to like search the web for the data, that would be great. But then also here's the thing you notice, there's no PDF that is recognized. There's a little check mark that usually comes here if there's a PDF recognized. So that means that for a thing like this, I would have to literally come in and download this thing. And then I would need to go into my downloads, drag and drop that item. But even if you notice the download doesn't work. So you have to download it and then you go here and then notice it like at this point, I'm like, what's the use of using Mendeley? Cause then I have to drag and drop it anyways. And also if I go here, let's, um, of course you can't save certain things. So one tip that I've done is as much as possible, I try to save the APA citation just because then for the most most part, I can just copy and paste the citation and then I can just add the colons because that's the only thing, or if it's too long, I just cut out like the DOI or things like that. So then you come here, then you have to go into Mendeley and then look at this. So I have APA citation, everything perfectly cited for this thing. 
I drag and drop it. It should work. I drag and drop it in here. Notice it's here, Waterman, right? And then miraculously enough, this one actually saved, but here's the problem. It was saved as a report and not a journal article. Even though I saved it as a journal article citation. And then only if I switch it, does it actually come here? And one of the problems I have with this is that means that with every step of the way, there's a correction to be made, or you have to make sure you're checking every little thing. And then oftentimes there are occasions where when I import something, despite having it in APA citation, especially when it's book art, book chapters and things like that, I have to go in and I have to fill out all of this information. There's no button or like selection that I can do to automate this, this setting because there's some there's some citation managers where you can literally go in and have a DOI or something like that, and it will autofill all of this information based off of that data. And this is why I have a problem with this. So let's take an example of this one, which is badly, badly cited. And this is something where I actually used this Mendeley function. There is some where you can uh, click on it and it has a little Mendeley link that you can click on something that looks like this, but then it says add to Mendeley and then you can click on it, but you can't like categorize it or anything. And you, it only just goes into the Mendeley database that you have saved. But also if you use this Mendeley function, it doesn't always work that way. It's very time consuming just to save a file then to ensure that it's perfectly cited correctly is a headache. And then the other problem I have, which I can't show you because the Mendeley link in my Word document is not working on this computer, my desktop. It works on my laptop. And yes, I have signed in. I have made sure I signed in properly. I have removed this thing. I have literally gone in and re-downloaded it logged in and I still have problems. So when you go to references and then you go to, mine's not even showing up anymore. That's interesting. You insert a citation or select a style, but you have not yet actioned this in Mendeley desktop. Yes, I have. It doesn't wanna work. But also when I cite things in Word document using my actual, like the Mendeley, add-on for Microsoft Word, it, see, it still pops up. You have to have this item perfectly cited in the format or else it will cite incorrectly. And then I have to go refix all of the references anyways. And then also, let's say, you know, you're in a really great workflow and you just, you know, you know this, the citation, like in your brain, when you start writing enough, you, you realize that you kind of know the citations and you can just insert them. And so you type the citation. The work cited page or the reference page that's already been created by Mendeley will not recognize those citations. And then also fixing, or let's say you go back in and you add a citation manually because you know the name. And so you don't want to go through the clicking, you know, going through the reference, you know, point and click to get to Mendeley's um, database. So you type it in, but there's always chances where I've actually lost citations because I've manually typed in um, a citation. And so there's just so many like problems I have that are very time consuming to correct. So what do I do now? Now I mainly use a, I kind of integrate a new and old technique that I have used. Um, and in the past, I would actually save the articles with the full APA citation so that when I create the reference page, all I have to do is copy and paste that file name into the references and then just, you know, make some minor adjustments. But now what I've done is, and I will have to say, if you're working with a file of articles that you've already downloaded and you're already writing about, this process of setting this up can be a little bit tedious. However, when you're actually 
like finding articles, saving articles, and inserting them into this file, I found it to be way more efficient. And I will tell you exactly why. Because this is the other thing that kind of bugs me about Mendeley, is that it's hard, like, to try to get through downloading the articles and accessing them, it, it's like an added step. And then also, you know, the way that it links information is not fully intuitive. Like I like that you can search keywords and things pop up, but it just, it just didn't feel very efficient to me. And so what I did realize though, is I need to figure out a way to manage my references efficiently so that like I can look down the list without a problem and find that article, especially when you're dealing with something like a dissertation, there's so many articles at play and I needed to be able to keep it all figured out. Cause especially since I'm doing a three article dissertation, there might be some references that I'm not using for one article, but I am using for the other two or vice versa. And so there's a lot to kind of keep track of. And as you can see, I'm not, I haven't fully filled out everything and I'm okay with that because right now it's more just trying to make use of something in the midst of doing things. But I think moving forward in the future, when I'm developing projects, I will, you know, start my projects from scratch using this approach, which means that things will be filled out all at one time. Um, whereas now I'm having to kind of backtrack. However, something that I like about this too, though, is the way that I can quickly see the citation for not only journal articles, but also books in a way that I can recognize it's a book and not be looking for, you know, things. And so something that I have done is I, I, because also I'm like, how, how do I know what I've cited when I haven't cited? And so I've created more custom col columns that I might adjust as I figure out what works and what doesn't work. And I have, you'll notice here it says yes. So like I've created a column that is literally a click. So I can click here and choose yes or no. So I can know like which um, items have been cited and which haven't. And I can change this column, like uh, filter this column to where all of the yes items are at the top. So if I'm ready to make a reference page, I don't have to sit there and figure out item by item. It'll have everything listed. And then I have the first author's last name and the year. And then this is specific. Um, this column is specific for my dissertation because like I said, I like I said, I have a three article dissertation. So I need to be able to identify like which articles. And so what I have done is I've created another point and click method where I have like article one, two, three, one and two, two and three all. Um, I know I, that's probably excessive, but for me again, it's efficiency. I I'm really trying to like cut down the amount of time that I'm having to spend on things. And another thing is keywords, which I have started to fill in, but that's not my priority right now because I know that all of the articles listed here is relevant to my dissertation and I'm pretty familiar with a lot of them. So like, I don't have to really focus on that too much, but in the future when I'm developing my projects, um, I will use this more, more actively and because I think it will help keep track of it. And also I plan to create like a massive list of like all the articles that I built, you know, to build out a database. So in the future, it'll look more various. And then also I have a PDF file article link. The cool thing about this is so I have all of these articles here and this is where, yes, I know there's some risk because like if these are not listed properly or something, it can be problematic, but you'll notice here, if I click on this, It'll tell me, give me additional permissions, da, 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 da. And of course I'm gonna give permission and then I grant access and then it'll say, okay, like it doesn't always show up this way, but especially the first time you're opening the article, it does that. But then it literally goes to that saved file on your desktop. So anything that you've saved in that file while reading in the past is saved because it's literally on a file like a desktop drive. And so in terms of highlighting or actively using the, the um, PDF files, you can do all of that. I haven't opened Adobe in a while, so it's taking a while, but now I have the file. Um, so I just found this to be way more efficient. I, I could babble on about this for a while, so I'm gonna try not to, but like the point is for me, this is very efficient. 
because I can filter, like I mentioned, I can sit here and go and filter this column A to Z. And then look, all of the yeses are here. Now I know which items I have already cited. Let's take this list. Here's the next question. How would this make it more efficient to create a reference list? I already have the APA citation here. Let's say I use control C, so I copy. Now we have our work file. No, this is not going to be perfect APA, but let's just do an example. So I have the center. I just copied that whole column of table, right? And then I paste it here. Now, here's the important part. Yeah, of course, like that's not going to work. But if I come down here and I say, keep text only, ta-da, and it might look like it's really overwhelming, but for me, especially if you know the keyboard shortcuts, like, you know, it's really easy to adjust this to APA style. The reason why I find this easier is because it's not like I have to pay close attention to see the error in the citation, right? Like I know the citation is correct. Whereas like if I use Mendeley, there might be an error that I'm not picking up. And especially going back to things with like ADHD, I'm not a psychologist. So like, don't take my word for it, is this being like proven fact. But for me, especially like in my experience, I am not good with paying close attention to small errors. Having something like Mendeley where like you really need to hone in on those errors it could be this minor thing that with the way it was saved, it just didn't work. I can feel comfortable because I've refined that, that file so much that I know that citation is correct. And of course, yes, I advocate for double checking your citations always, but at least like there's a difference between completely not knowing there's always small errors versus, oh, let me do a final check. So yes, there are some downsides to this because like obviously you know, you have to italicize these things. But there's a difference between, like I said, I know those have to be corrected. So I can go in much more efficiently knowing that these are what needs to be corrected and correct them rather than having to just really notice the minor adjustments. And so for me, I find this to be the most efficient way to do things. You might feel otherwise, but for me, it's reducing error but it's also saving me a lot of time and frustration. Mendeley is a backup storage for me at this point, but I have a lot of critical issues with how it downloads, saves the citations, how you have to integrate the citations because with every single citation, you have to stop what you're writing and literally point and click. And yes, you could probably like write this citation and then go back and insert it. But like for me, I that's no. That, no, that's too much. It's just it's just an added step to me. And then also just the compatibility with finding the citations and stuff is just a headache. And because I've done APA so much now, like I I don't necessarily need to know how to write it. Not to say that I don't check APA. Like I always, you know, there's changes that happen and things like that. Like always double check your APA manual but I don't have to second guess every single citation. And I say this while I'm sitting here showing citations and I'm like, there are some issues here that I need to check on. But, um, but overall, like, I, I, don't, I don't need the assistance of creating the APA citation. I need assistance with how to best organize my citations. Um, and by this way, I know that I can not have to like, figure out which citations I included and which ones I didn't. And I don't have to like be concerned with whether my citations were saved or not. If I didn't use Mendeley to insert it, it just puts my mind at ease. If you like citation managers and you find them helpful, use them. Um, I know people who use Zotero and love it, live by it. Um, they find it extremely helpful. The thing downside of using Mac is Zotero has, at least to the last of my knowledge, like last year, they stopped having these integrations. I'm not very techy, so I don't know what the proper terms are that would make it more compatible with Zotero. And they were some of the integrations that are most needed for making the efficiency of a citation manager work. So I went with Mendeley because it looked like they had made some major updates, but then the more that I had used it, the more that I realized, no, they like the reasons I didn't like Mendeley before 
are still the reasons I don't like Mendeley now. Um, <laughs> and it's not to bash on Mendeley. Like I, there are some features of it that I really like, but those features don't outweigh the cost towards, you know, being inefficient and just not functional for me. So I'm kind of going back to my old approach. And then I'm still saving things to Mendeley just because I think it's a great backup storage um, and it can hold a lot more files, but no, I'm back to my old ways and some new ways. So maybe what I can do, I don't know if this would work, but if anybody is really interested in the template that I've created, and again, I, I don't even know if I want to do this yet because I'm still like working through maybe what I find is problematic in my um file but maybe once I get through the dissertation phase a little bit more I'll know like what excel file structure might work best and so maybe I might link that to this video or a future video that really details like how I created that but so far I've loved it it's been extremely helpful for me let me know what your approach is uh down below I'm really curious because it's fascinating to hear like everybody has different techniques or approaches to using references or managing references. So I'd be curious to hear about it down in the comments. I hope this wasn't a really long video. Uh, I feel like I rambled, but hopefully you got something out of it. I'll see you next time.